we talked to Perry Four, but now we get to talk to the OG. The OG, right? OG Perry Three. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new name, OG Perry Three. Uh, Perry Watson the Third, uh, partner and operator of Toyota of Marysville. Yeah, Marysville Toyota. Yeah. Uh, Marysville Toyota. I always get that backwards. And so we were just talking to uh, your son about being kind of a, an OG next gen. Right, and he can kind of lead the way for other people. But you're out there still, really trying to to lean into uh, a new way of doing business with single point of contact. You had a new Toyota point. How old is it now? Six years. Six years. So now you're finally getting to that point where you've started to go through a cycle, a cycle and a half. Um, what are you learning in the single point mentality, and what do you think uh, dealers should be thinking of, whether or not they're single point or not? You know, it always comes down to people development, and more and more we're bringing. The whole idea about one price is bringing people in from the outside. We probably have the youngest dealership, probably one of the youngest in the, in the West Coast. What, what, what's, what major market are you near? We're Seattle, yep. Seattle me Metro Market. Great talent pool, because now you're pulling from all other industries. But what we're finding is that businesses aren't developing people. Businesses As, uh, in general. Business in general. No training, no development no exposure to customer service. So I've stopped getting frustrated with, we hire people in for talent and says, why aren't they performing? Why don't they know? But when we peel it back, it's lack of exposure. So let's say you're a 22 year old, mm -hmm. maybe second or third job, fast foods in the malls. Yep. What have you been exposed to relative to process, sales training? Like specific process. Yeah. Yeah. So. Then we start peeling it back and we start looking at self-esteem issues. How have they been raised? What are their You're values? You're really peeling it back. We're really peeling it back. So last week I started the science of selling for our sales force. Uh, I don't know if you know my background, but I started with Xerox in the... One of the legendarily best training, training organizations right. ever created. So, we're, so as I look and as a matter of fact, I asked my managers, I'm no longer the general manager, I promoted our general sales manager to the general manager. So I asked them, what is your what role is, then? What is my role? Yeah. They said, who am I? And they said, well, I think you're the dealership psychologist, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. So I do observe people and understand why and how and what's going on. And so I see it's just a matter of not knowing what or why or how. So we're introducing something called the science of selling. There's the science behind selling. And, and you, what, you created this. This no, is. I, I'm developing the curriculum, but there is a textbook that we have. And what it's basically saying is that some people come in and just, quote, start selling. Every word or phrase that you ask has a rationale or purpose. And so we're trying to get into training our people to understand the psychology, meeting people where they are, how to build relationships, what questions to ask. So we're gonna have glossary of terms, phrases, Let in me, different ways. Okay, so I think a lot of dealerships, when I think about sales and sales training, a lot of the time it's like memorize these talk tracks so you have something to say. It sounds like your approach is a lot different than that. Yeah, the book teaches there are six whys. If you can't answer the six whys, then you're missing it. So I did this exhaustive list of all the questions that we would ask from a sales perspective. What car do you drive? Where do you live? All these things. And I asked the staff, well, if we've got this list, do we have everything? But one of the things that was not in there that the book teaches us is why is the customer making the change? Why are you changing now? What's driving it? That's an open-ended question, it's too. It's an open-ended question. That's going to reveal a lot about the customer. So what their family situation is, what their in job for situation service is. Whether you're coming in or sales, they're trying to solve a problem. Yeah. We don't see somebody buying a vehicle as solving a problem. You know, legendarily, uh, the, the marketing guru Seth Godin said people don't want to buy a quarter-inch drill bit. They want to buy a quarter-inch hole. So Correct. they can put a nail in it and hang a picture of their family right. so they can enjoy the memory of their family. So if I come in for service, what's my problem? What am I trying to solve? So for example, let's say a service advisor. 
when they greet the customer, walk to Marysville, Toyota, I would say, what's your goal today? What are you trying to accomplish? And so just asking some base level questions, think about the information you get. What am I trying to solve? How can I help you? And so as simple as it sounds, we don't do a good good job at that. Number two, all dealerships, every business have a different process. Even Costco is different yep. than, than Walmart. And I'd on say. and on and on, right? <laughs> so if you've ever been to a doctor, mm-hmm. one of the things I love the way they do it, and I borrow it from them, whether you're five years old or 80 years old, they talk to you the same. They say, well, this cow, this is what's going to happen. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And why do they do that? There's anxiety. Mm -hmm. They want to be clear. But when you come into the dealerships, we don't explain our processes. That's a great point. We don't tell them what we're going to do, whether that's sales or service. And that's where the what is your goal today can help you outline, okay, great, you're looking to do this. What I'd like, we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then that. How does that sound? Have right? you been here before? Let me explain our processes. We're going to do this, this. They and do that this. in a, re- a nice restaurant, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been here before? No, you haven't. Well, here, all of our food is farm to table, which means this, 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 and this. The other thing we're trying to, in service, one of the things we're finding in our surveys is that we miss stuff. So, a, in a in a good restaurant. A good waitress was like, let's review. So you want this, this, and this, right? Medium rare, you want this, right, that. We don't ask those basic fundamental questions, so there's some things that we can bring from other industries to help us with a customer. Because that's the number one issue that I'm finding in service, not that it wasn't fixed right, we forgot something. But, oh, by the way, I'm not blaming my people anymore. I never trained them how to ask the questions, summary questions. So in the beginning, what's your goals? Number two, explain our process. Number three, review to make sure. And then at the end, as the customer's leaving, have I done everything for you? Did I miss anything? Do so you have any outstanding questions? All of those things. Fundamental those things, we know that, but that's not part of the process, whether it's a one price. So that's what I'm finding that we need to know. Okay. Let me ask you this one last question. Uh, There was a lot of conversation around single point of content. We were just talking about how this year, maybe that conversation has has not escalated, but it's maybe coasting along a little bit. You've only ever been single point of content, contact in the store you're in now. What would you say to dealers considering single point of contact? I would say, From a customer experience, it's the best process. I would say the difference is, well, let me explain. Whether it's the school system, and let me explain that. In the school system, a classic example is in industry, we don't like variability. We want everybody to do things the same way. In the school system, we're going to teach the 60%. If you're 20% high achiever or you're 20% laggard, we ain't got time. We don't have time for everybody's individual. Same thing in sales, train everybody the same. What I found out in a a one person's touch point, we're embracing variability. And that's harder because the way you sell and the way someone else is sell, it's not the same. So think about this. We hired you for your individual talent, and then we put you in this system where we want to do it the same way. But as a management team, it's harder now to make sure that we have a structure, but I want you to do it your way. So we found out that that's the difficult thing. It's harder to teach and embrace the variability of your staff to really get them on point to self-actualize. But the upside is? The upside is that once you get people in their sweet spot and understand that their performance go through the roof. So we now have to train. We're no longer feeling like we're failing our people. We finally figured out we're embracing that variability. And that's why in a one price, in in a traditional store, think about this. Sales reps do one thing, I land you on a car, and then I turn you over. Yep. 
That's everybody does it the same way. I don't have any variability in F and I. I want it, so I specialize. Yep. Delivery specialize. So for the dealer, it's very efficient. But from a cost standpoint, you got all these silos, and you got the customers' experience that they don't like that. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to get people who are doing things different ways. Yep. And, if, and, and so that's what we found out. It's more difficult, but for a customer satisfaction perspective, from a performance perspective. How about our, retention? Our retention is going through the roof. And, so, and I think that's the, you, you don't know that for a while, correct. right? Which is, I think, what keeps a lot of people away and scared because we're saying if you go to single point, you got to do a lot of hard work up front. You got to disrupt your whole process. And it'll, it'll pay off in like two to three years. Here's the other side of it. Because I do things the same, my turnover is higher because that person who wants some individuality. The top, bottom not, 20, it's, they're it's gone. Not, they, 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 they're, there's no allowance for me to be different. So what's retention look like? For those traditional stores, I don't know if the turnover is still around 35, 40%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So think or about higher. that. So which would you like? Which problem do you want to have? Right. You want to have a turnover? Both ways are you, hard. Which hard do you want? Right. What's your, what's, your, what's your turnover looking like? My turnover probably in sales is maybe 10%. I'm going to look at the camera for that one. 10% sales turnover. <laughs> but we're also spending more time on who gets in. Yeah. What's the skill set we're looking for? Well, you can. And meeting people where they are. But there's been a lot of training of the management team to understand here, here, here's, here's a big difference. Something I've learned. I manage people, or they work for me, as opposed to they're in my care. What's the difference? How do I care for them? I care for them by knowing them. It's about building trust. If they trust me, they'll let me know what's, they'll let me in. Then I have to create safety. Let me give an example of safety. A young lady from another Toyota store was in the office. She couldn't break into sales. Now nah, you can't break into sales. So one of her friends came over and workforce is doing well. She says, we Kim, you should, Cassie, you should come over. So she came in in sales and she found out she hated it. Traditional store, I'll have to quit and go someplace else. But because we have a safe environment, we found out that sometimes courage and fear both show up at the same time. I'm fearful I'm going to lose my job, but the courage I have to speak up that says I'm unhappy. So because we created safety, she says, look, I know you guys gave me an opportunity. I know I've been in for four months, but I'm so unhappy. Okay. Great talent. What would you like to do? I'd like to go back to the office. Just so happens. We had an opening in office, the highest performer in our office, because now she knows she really loves it, and she is like... Yeah, there's no what ifs on the other side of it. Is, Wouldn't it be nice? But that safety for people to say, I don't know what I'm doing. My new service manager, I mean, he's coming in, hired, blah, blah, blah. So I says to him, I said, you know, I know when you're hired, you know, you got your best foot forward. But I know that everybody doesn't know anything. I already look. It's a safe environment. Tell me what you don't know. Yeah. It's okay. Tell me what you don't know, because I don't want to find out. It's okay. Well, I'm not good at resolving conflict. I'm not this. I don't know that much about the financial statement. So now, being open, great. Let us help you with that. So creating trust and safety allows us to get our people to open up so we can help them. If I can reach you, then I can teach you. I can train you. Well, if that is not loving people more than you love cars, oh, and by the way, it helps you sell a lot more cars. I don't know what is. Perry, thank you for sharing thank with us today. Thank you very much. Today. Glad to be here. Always great.